<coughs> Advocate uh, Guevo. Advocate Guevo. Morning, sir. Why do you leave your house without telling your wife? Yeah, and I see you live in a big estate there. And we are going to expropriate that uh, estate that you occupy there. I paid cash for it, uh, this one. You paid cash? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, 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 that's good. Yes, they are, you are a good model. But the value is no rent. <laughs> oh, you bought it from Dr. Um, Melder. Yes, he expected uh, it from me, so the value is no. Oh, no, that, <laughs> no, no. So he's lying. He says he paid cash, can't he? It's, it's a nil value. <clears throat> uh, are we ready to start? Advocate? Dr. Melda? Dr. Melda? Yes, Chairperson, I'm ready. Let's, we can go. How are you? I'm finding you, sir. It's Friday. It's a good sign. It's, it's a good, good time, eh? Yes. When are you launching the legacy project of the Melda family, which has played such an important role? Uh, one day when the Melda family is finished, but we've only just started, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Now, don't forget us when you draw up the list of invitations. We'll never do so. We'll never forget. Okay. <clears throat> Advocate uh, Guebu. Advocate Guebu. Yes, yes, uh, Chair. Are we, ready, are we ready to start? Yes, we can start, Chair. The agenda, uh, Bonani has, has flighted it, it's on the screen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable members, uh, you are welcome to uh, this meeting. Uh, are there any apologies? Uh, advocate, are there any apologies? Uh, there are none, Chairperson, from my side. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, do we correct? We have enough members to start the meeting, Chair. Oh, okay. Does the word enough include uh, correct? Not necessarily, Chair. There's a minimum number of members of the okay. to start with proceedings. Okay. <clears throat> uh, honorable members, uh, at our last meeting, <clears throat> we agreed that uh, we should deal with Section 25 as a whole. This holistic approach meant that we should deal with this section clause by clause. We started the process, but did not conclude it. The discussion which ensued helped us to address 
some conceptual issues, e.g. distinction between deprivation and expropriation, the relationship of representative and participatory democracy in the process of amending section 25. Questions were raised whether our holistic approach does not exceed our mandate. We requested a legal opinion to address these concerns. Today, we shall continue with our clause by clause approach and then look at the legal opinion to determine whether or not we have exceeded our mandate. But we cannot delay our work because of a legal opinion which may be open to different interpretations. We allowed political parties to represented in this ad hoc committee to hold bilateral meetings which should be completed by the end of the week, this weekend. However, we should continue our clause by clause deliberations to identify other issues which may have to be referred to bilaterals. It is imperative that these bilaterals are concluded not later than Sunday. To enable us to conclude our work, we shall request the chair of chairs, Honorable Cedric Frolic, to grant permission to meet more than once per week until we finalize our work. Because uh, at our last meeting, uh, when we dealt with the, the clause by clause approach, there were people who, for instance, members who had not entertained the idea of what deprivation is, what the difference between deprivation and expropriation is, we shall then, uh, uh, with your permission, start by clause one, uh, so that uh, if in the meantime, uh, parties have moved closer together, we can uh, assess that. So I will open the floor for discussion of, of clause one, and then we move until we get uh, to uh, clause uh, nine. Uh, Dr. Uh, Honorable uh, Lotri. She, I just want to have clarity. So you are yeah. saying we are proceeding with the clauses as contained in section 25, um, and only afterwards look at the legal opinion that we received. Um, whereas I would have thought that we first start with that and then see whether we have the right approach or not. The reason I, with respect, don't want to start with a legal opinion uh, is because uh, another legal opinion may say something else. The other one may say something else. So I don't know, want us to be bogged down by legal opinions. Uh, rather focus on the work but if at the end of the day, we have uh, exceeded our mandate, that can be dealt with at a, a later stage. But we can't start with the uh, controversies which are not taking us anywhere. Uh, Honorable Masipa. Um, Chair, thanks very much and good morning to our colleagues, um, fellow <clears throat> honorable members. Chair, I think we have got the legal opinion from the legal team that is before us and it was with us last week already. I think it would be just proper to just start with that, um, you know, give them the opportunity really to present that before we go into, you know, further discussions. Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to the colleagues. I concur, Chair, that we should really start with the legal opinion. Otherwise, what is the use of getting a legal opinion if we are not going to listen to what it says and let it influence our work going forward? Thank you, Chair. Okay, any other input? Uh, Dr. Melda? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, now, I understand that you want to us to continue and see if um, parties have moved closer to one another. I guess um, it should be interesting to, to hear that. However, the, the legal opinion is not going to change. The, what is being said in the legal opinion remains what is in the legal opinion. And the committee will then have to decide whether we take that seriously or not. 
Um, I understand that you would like to proceed the way that you have proposed. It should be interesting to listen. But in the end, um, the logical thing would have been to first look at the legal opinion. But if you rule otherwise, then we can do it the other way around. However, the legal opinion will not change. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Gondre. Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues, and good morning, Honorable Chairperson. I stand in agreement with Honorable Lotrit and uh, Honorable Masipa and Honorable Mbavama. I feel we should really consider the legal opinion before we go further so that we know um, within which parameters we are expected to um, look into the amendment. Um, the legal import, uh, opinion is important, and I feel that it deserves to be considered by the committee before we proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable uh, Kaba. Uh, good, good day, and uh, uh, good day, uh, colleagues. Uh, I think uh, let's not confuse uh, the status of the meeting. Uh, this is a continuation of the process um, we started uh, in the last day meeting. When we adjourned, we were already on a clause two uh, of the constitution. Um, I agree 100% with uh, Dr. Mulder that uh, legal opinion is legal opinion. It doesn't matter whether uh, we start with it or we end with it, uh, but I want to propose that we take it at the end is not going to change anything. The legal opinion doesn't speak to the process that we are engaged in right now. It speaks to when the committee um, you know, uh, adopts a substantive, uh, what you call adopts an amendment that is a substantively different uh, from the clauses uh, that were published. At this stage, there is no substantive uh, you know, clause or amendment that is different uh, to uh, what is already uh, published in the cassette. So let's not preempt the process. Let's go through the process that if we come up with anything substantively different from what is in the uh, in the gazette, in the gazette, will then follow the process as suggested by the legal opinion. I have no problem following the process that the legal opinion is suggesting. The legal opinion does not uh, stop us from considering the matters, and 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 that if we agree on a, a new clause that is substantively different, you know, and uh, 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 that we may adopt it, but we must, at the back of our mind, as we do it, consider that we have to follow the process as it is outlined in the legal opinion. So, so, so there is, uh, I've, I've looked at the legal opinion, I think one of us here have studied the legal opinion, and uh, I have no problem with the legal opinion, and uh, I think it's a good guide. Uh, let's go ahead, that is my proposal. Uh, thank you, Honorable Kala. Honorable Shbambo. No, we, can't, we can't be revolving around the same issue time and again, because the question of whether we're going to discuss the entire Section 25 and all subsections was resolved in the last meeting. It's not the point of discussion. Why should we, every meeting, be revolving around the same issue? That is concluded. We must proceed and discuss all the subsections in terms of relevance. I have not seen this legal opinion, which uh, we are talking about, uh, and which is said to be, uh, must be presented. And, 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 and if it is from parliament, I'm very, very suspicious of that because I, I, whatever I can say, Chair, is not casting aspersions. There's been an infiltration of the legal office in parliament to want to hijack and distort this process. And this is that is why you see the coincidence of white political parties that are saying we must listen to what the parliament legal office is saying. It's, it's, not, it's not independent of a class and national character and, and influences. This thing which we're busy with here. 
because everyone else has got interest, whether subjective or objective, in terms of the outcome of this process. I can, I can tell you now that consistently, the guidance of this committee, even from the draft bill itself, was a deliberate attempt to misguide us, to mislead us, uh, from, and to misdirect us from dealing with the substantial issues which are the foundations of these deliberations. We must not be distracted by, by infiltrations that uh, are, are, being, are being planted in, 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 the, in the administration of parliament. That, that, that is problematic. But there's a resolution now that we're going to discuss subsection by subsection. We're going to present a report in parliament. If parliament thinks that there's something wrong about it, parliament will resolve in that way. If people want to challenge it in the constitutional court, they have got recourse. But we can't be stuck on one thing time and again and discussing the same thing as if our children would not know what we're doing. Let us proceed and discuss the sections. If we do not agree, we will not agree. If we agree, we'll go to parliament, present a report, adopt the changed constitution. If people want to challenge that, let them go to court. We'll meet there to justify our case and then we'll close it from there. We can't bear Thank that ransom for a long time here. Thank you, Honorable Shibambu. Honorable Melde, Dr. Melde. Sure. Yes, thank you. Uh, is that Honorable uh, Gumede? It's me, Chair. Yes. You, you'll come after uh, Dr. Melder, please. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. Um, now, the problem is this. Uh, the, the people who did not read the legal opinion, they are the ones that are not prepared. And with all due respect, we have now heard on several occasions that a claim is being made that the Legal Services Department of Parliament has been infiltrated by a member of Parliament. That is a very, very serious allegation. And I don't think you can just ignore it. I don't think we can just sit here and listen to that kind of thing. I think Mr. Shabambu should state and prove his allegation. If you look at the legal opinion that we've got in front of us from the legal department, and it's from the head of the legal department, it also refers to a position taken by the NA table with regard to what we are doing. <clears throat> Is it also the opinion of Mr. Shivambu that the NA table staff has been infiltrated. With all due respect, Chairperson, we cannot sit here week after week listening how uh, 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 all kinds of uh, allegations are made against the legal services and just ignore it. Mr. Shivambu is a member of parliament. These are very serious allegations. I want him to substantiate that, or if he can't substantiate it, then to withdraw in terms of not doing what he's doing at the moment. He cannot accept that. It's never acceptable. Chairperson, I will, I will substantiate it, will even write to all the relevant parliamentary bodies to illustrate that we have been infiltrated by politicians who act like the advisors of parliament. We'll do that. Honorable Shibambo, uh, Honorable Shibambo, I have a problem with opinions generally because uh, opinions are attributable to individuals. And uh, there are also problems of inferences. Everybody has the right to form an opinion or draw inferences. So if we use this meeting to be debating opinions and inferences, we are not going anywhere. But I want to make a ruling after honorable, listening to Honorable Gumede. <clears throat> honorable Gumede. I'm not sure. Oh, good morning to members and to you, Chair, uh, and all other members present. Chair, I, I think I'll be making what is implicit explicit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure the, the, the last comment of Honorable Kaba may have covered me, but he has not uh, sort of uh, given it a little bit of a flesh. <clears throat> I, I, I want to propose or second your recommendation, Chair, on this basis. We start with the clauses, others may call them subsections, right? And then we come to legal opinion. The reason being that if we start with that, will every one of us would have uh, instilled the kind of understanding and all clauses would have been deliberated. 
by the time we go to the legal opinion, we will exactly know which extra fat we cut from the clauses or the subsections. So all what you are doing, check. Let's all of us familiarize ourselves with the clauses, and then by the time, especially the concern that is expressed by Honorable Shivambo, by the time we go to legal, a, any one of us would have mastered the contents of the subsections. Then it will be a very smooth process. Rather than you are giving the advice on white, because those things, let's not, let us not assume that we know the clauses. Some of us, in the words of uh, um, uh, Honorable Mulder, I think he, he was correct, that in fact some of us may have shifted, we may have found grounds, a common ground. So all that, by the time we go to the legal uh, opinion, at least we'll be singing as a choir rather than sing as a solo, being, being a soloist. So Chair, may I wait there? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kama. Honorable members, I want to borrow the words of uh, Honorable Kama. He says, uh, this is a continuation of the process we started. And therefore, we, and, and he also said, we were already dealing with uh, clause two or subsection two, which means we are continuing from where we left off. So uh, I think uh, on, uh, Dr. Melder as well uh, supported him by saying that it doesn't matter what comes first and comes last. An opinion remains an opinion. But the problem already is that if we start with an opinion, when some members uh, are challenging the integrity of the opinion, wrongly or rightly, we will actually be doing a disservice to this process. So I am going to rule that uh, we pack uh, the question of the opinion, deal with the process. At the end, uh, we'll deal with the, the opinion. But even before we deal with the opinion, we, as it, uh, Dr. Melder suggests, we need to deal with the, the suspicions around the legal opinion. Because uh, my understanding of the rules is that uh, if you make an allegation of this kind, you need to come up with a substantive uh, uh, motivation for that. And I'm not sure that uh, this is the right platform to deal with uh, the question of infiltration or something like that. So uh, let's just go down to our business and then uh, we'll find space to deal with the allegations which... Uh, uh, have been made against uh, the legal opinion. Dr. Milder? Yes, yes, I just I don't want to make it difficult. I just want to clarify one thing. My position on the opinion is <coughs> not that opinion is an opinion. My position is that the contents of the opinion will not change. The legal positions taken in the opinion will not change regardless when we deal with it. That's my point. No, thanks, thanks for clarifying that, uh, uh, Dr. Honorable Dr. Milder. I think uh, let's return to our work. Uh, 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 we, uh, Honorable Kaba said we were dealing with con uh, subsection two, but I suggest that we start with one because there was no uh, agreement on that. Let's see if there's fresh thinking from other parties on subsection one. Okay. Okay. Yes. May, may, we, we today were not seeking uh, any agreement uh, on any of the clauses. Uh, it's an open discussion where parties present their views um, uh, and uh, we engage no, on I agree. I, I agree with you. What I mean is uh, last time some people did not even understand that uh, that clause uh, involves deprivation. We just want to hear if there are any uh, fresh thoughts on, the, on this part. It's not for the purpose of reaching agreement, but just to hear what... Uh, Thanks. The ANC has presented its views on the matter, Chair. Yeah. yeah. Chair, yes, uh, that the Constitution um, provides uh, 
two ways in which the, the, the state may interfere with uh, property rights. One is deprivation and two is expropriation. And that uh, the two have a different uh, meaning. And uh, whilst um, expropriation is deprivation, uh, but deprivation is not expropriation. And uh, there is a difference. Uh, 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 the difference is, is, is that in expropriation, uh, uh, property, uh, the expropriated property vest uh, with, with, with the state. When, uh, and, and when in deprivation, uh, there is no such uh, vesting. Um, all what it does, it limits use and enjoyment um, of the um, uh, owner, uh, of the property owner. And thank you very much, Chair. I, uh, I think lastly, it was through deprivation uh, that uh, uh, mineral rights uh, now vest. Uh, um, I mean, the state, sorry, mineralized that uh, the state became the, it was in through deprivation that uh, the state became uh, the custodian of the mineral rights. Thank you very much. I want to leave it at that for now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Kava. Any other hand? <clears throat> uh, Dr. Melgo? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. With regard to subsection one, um, I understand and I see it's also the position of the Department of Justice that it should remain as is. And I've also heard what Mr. Kaba has just said. However, if there's a decision to amend section, subsection one, if, if we would go in that direction, which I don't think we should, then I would suggest that we do the same with subsection one that is done with all the other rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights, which are positively formulated. And then if one would like to amend, then we should start off with a, possible, uh, a positive statement by saying every citizen has a right to own property, and then you continue with the rest. Then it will be in line with all the other provisions in the Constitution. But at the moment, I understand that uh, the suggestion is that it remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Honorable Masipa, your hand was up at some stage. Chair, sorry, uh, my hand was up um, with regards to your ruling that um, I see you recognize that uh, we, I mean, uh, some members are challenging the opinion. So I just wanted you to recognize that we are also challenging the process uh, that is being followed because we are literally, you know, ignoring what the NA table has instructed us to do uh, in terms of this process. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Masipa, with due respect, the process was agreed to last Friday. I have not opened for a review of the process. So your challenge is uh, with respect and uh, not in order. Uh, so uh, Dr. Lotri and uh, Honorable Tala, Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I just want to state for the record that um, we are of the opinion that uh, 25 subsection 1 should not change and should remain as is in the Constitution. You want it to remain as is? Did you say that? Yes, Chair. No amendment oh. to 25 1. Or oh, should remain as is. Okay, thank you, the Doctor. Uh, Honorable Kaba. Uh, no, thank you very much. Um, you see, with respect to Section 25.1, uh, I uh, disagree with the position uh, stated by uh, Dr. Mulder that uh, <clears throat> we make this a positive right. It is certainly not a positive right as it stands, it's a negative right. And that if we make it positive, a, a positive right will abrogate the transformative nature of uh, Section 25 and the 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 the, the values uh, that uh, underline uh, the Constitution. Uh, so I don't want. I decline the invite. Uh, if anything, Chair, uh, I would be happy if we make Section 25 one. Uh, ex, uh, explicit, uh, 
the mandate of the committee was to make explicit what is uh, uh, implicit. So uh, that's the only invitation that the ANC will accept. But as it stands now, we are not proposing any amendment to section 25.1, but you said Chair, in the beginning that uh, is a season of uh, bilaterals. We have already written to the different uh, political parties, um, you know, expressing our willingness to talk uh, with them, uh, will uh, listen uh, uh, and we're open to persuasion. And uh, we may come back with uh, an amendment to section 25.1, but only if it makes uh, explicit uh, what is uh, implicit. I just want to leave it at that for now, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, that is uh, very helpful. I, I, I like the concept of persuasion, that no one is imposing anything on anyone, but we are in a process of uh, uh, persuading one another in this meeting, and uh, there's also an opportunity to hold bilaterals, and that process of persuasion will continue there. Uh, Honorable Shibambo. <clears throat> No, oh, thanks, uh, Chairperson. I, I you know I've got difficulty with the like substantial discussions when we have not yet concluded the bilateral engagements in terms of some of the issues because some of the things would would be better resolved in these bilateral engagements that we are busy with now. Uh, but I think that if your intention is truthful that you want to make explicit what you think is implicit, which I, which I don't agree with that formulation. Why don't you then say in section one that no one may be deprived of property except in terms of law of general application and deprivation can be used as an instrument for redress and redistribution of property. And then full stop if you want to make it explicit, if that is the intention in terms of, and then delete the one that says, no law may permit uh, or, uh, permit arbitrary deprivation of property. So you replace that with deprivation can be used as an instrument for distribution and redress. I think that is what your conference, those of you who are from the ANC told you to do, that you must expropriate without compensation for redress and redistribution purposes. So make it clear in that constitution consistent with what delegates told you in Nazareth. Honorable Nishpambo, I hear quite clearly what you are saying. Uh, and we have said that in this meeting, we don't need to reach agreement, but we have uh, identified that you and the EFF and the ANC still have not uh, uh, gotten closer to each other on this matter. Can we pack it and refer it to bilaterals between the two of you? Uh, Honorable Dr. Lodri. Um, Thank you, Chairperson. Just on the point of bilaterals, um, it was mentioned now that invitations have been sent out to different parties for bilaterals. Could I just get clarity on um, who the invitation, if any, is directed? Uh, I see Honorable Kava's hand. You will assist us in that, Honorable Kava. Uh, Chair, may I invite uh, our whip uh, to deal with that uh, question? And uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Lesoma, I see your hand. Can but, you... but before you invite uh, uh, Honorable Lesoma, may I invite uh, Honorable Shivambo to put it to put his proposal in <coughs> uh, for the bilateral discussion? Thanks. Okay, thank you, Honorable Kaba. Honorable Suma. Honorable Suma. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair, and good morning, colleagues. I, I thought we were going to 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 ascend to what Honorable uh, Kaba have requested that uh, Honorable uh, Shibambo comes first. But nevertheless, in response and assisting Dr. Lotri. I have written through on behalf of the organization of the members who sit in this committee on behalf of the ANC to ACDP, Honorable Drink, DA, Dr. Lo uh, um, Lotrix, 
Lotrit, yes, and uh, FF Plus, Dr. Muda, IFP, Honorable Butelizi. And of course, with the EFF, we've already started uh, having our bilaterals. So it's ongoing work, which is work in progress. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Lesuma. Honorable Shibambo. No, Chair, I, no, but on the 14th of May, we, on the 14th of May, we are, we resolved here yeah, that to, to smoothen this process, let all political parties that are involved here yeah, engage in bilateral engagements yeah, in terms of what happens. So I don't know what the DA is talking about because if they want to have a bilateral, they must write to all the political parties and have engagements with them. They don't have to wait for anyone's invitation. It never said that the ANC is going to write to all political parties. It says, if you feel like you're going to align your position with the Inkata Freedom Party, write to Inkata and engage with them. So there is no issue of anyone being excluded. If you feel as the DA that you can persuade uh, the EFF with your neoliberal views, write to us and then we'll engage with you in terms of what happens. So, so, so it's an open process of bilaterals so that we persuade each other as political parties. I thought that consensus was built uh, last week Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, honorable members, let's not uh, be bogged down by the appro approach to bilaterals. Uh, let's accept that uh, Honorable Lesuma has already taken the initiative to write to other parties. Uh, maybe we should uh, ask Honorable Lesuma just to make sure that uh, she coordinates with uh, all of you because if we are going to leave it to individual parties, there can be cross lines and uh, that will delay the, the process. I, I want to suggest, Honorable Suma, talk to all other parties and make sure that uh, this whole thing is uh, uh, streamlined properly. Do you want to no. say something on that? Yes, we, we shall do that. <clears throat> to pursue hardly those ones who will, who will opt not to respond to my emails. Thank you very much, Chair. Oh, 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 okay. Hello, uh, Honorable Dr. Lothar. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I would just request that um, the Honorable Lesoma just check my email address with um, the Secretariat. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, we, I think uh, with 25.1, uh, we have agreed that uh, that should be uh, go to bilaterals. Uh, anything on subsection two? Hey, Chair. Yes, Honorable Kaba. The ANC has expressed uh, its view on uh, uh, subsection two, and um, we have seen the position of the EFF, and we are prepared uh, to enter into the into a, a, a discussion with them on, on, on the matter. But uh, we are worried about uh, the overbreath uh, of the, their uh, proposal is overly broad. And uh, in that um, it refers to property in, in general. And the property is, is, is it's, it's everything. Uh, land is property, but uh, property is not just land. So, but uh, we will listen to what they have to say. I don't want us to conclude on the matter today. I also want to listen what the DA and the EFF has to say, So, and DA and other parties, uh, uh, Freedom Front Plus and other parties, what they have to say in the matter, so that we are able to prepare for the bilaterals with them as well. Thank you so much. And I also say that uh, for the purpose of this bilateral, all parties are equally important regardless of their size. So uh, no party must be marginalized. This should, uh, uh, all parties must be involved in the bilaterals because as I said before, we are not seeking an ANC EFF solution or a ANC a DA solution, we are seeking a South African, uh, we are seeking a solution to a South African problem. So let's respect one another, 
respect uh, one another's opinions, and then uh, the balance of evidence at the end will direct us which way to go uh, in the best interest of South Africa. Thank you. Dr. Honorable Lodrich. Thank you, Chairperson. In terms of 25 sub 2, um, we are of the opinion that it should remain as is, and we have prepared ourselves in terms of the uh, proposed amendment as gazetted. So if we are just dealing with section uh, 25.2 as it is contained currently in um, the constitution, we are of opinion that it should remain as is. We will give our comments when we look at the specific um, amend proposed amendments to the bill. Uh, thank you, Dr. Honorable Shpabmu. No, thank you, Chair. I don't understand what the Honorable Java is saying because the current, the current constitution says that property may be expropriated in terms of laws of general application and subject to composition and all of those things. There. That is what it currently says. And then ourselves would then say that property may be expropriated without composition. Then wh why is this saying it's broad? Why is it broad when it's us who are saying property? What the constitution is saying that now, it's opportunism that I think, like, it's pure opportunism because we're amending the constitution and we're just trying to give a context of what is the purpose now. And the purpose now is to then remove the composition component which is currently contained in the constitution. If, if we were to go according to your logic, well, we, we are making explicit, which you say is implicit. So I was also saying, let's remove the composition component, but we're dealing with the property question that is contained there. Unless if you want us to write land, then we can write that if that is what makes you happy. But the issue we're dealing with here is the property clause and we're amending it accordingly. Thanks. Uh, Honorable Kawa, you... Yes, no. Uh, I hear what uh, Honorable Chivambo has to say, but uh, his reading of Section 25.2 is incorrect. Uh, he places uh, the full stop at the wrong um, uh, place, and uh, it doesn't end. The section doesn't end where he ended. There's a qualification built in the section. However, the ANC is prepared to talk uh, to, to dialogue on, 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 on their proposal. Thank you so much. Well, thanks very much. I think uh, uh, Honorable Shibambo and yourself on that question are helping us uh, to identify the need for uh, an engagement between uh, the two of you. And of course, other parties may also want to engage on that. So the engagement uh, is uh, open to all political parties. Uh, Honorable Shwambo, is that an old hand or a new one? No, it's, a hand it's, a, it's an old hand. Oh, it's an old hand on a new man's uh, arm. Uh, Honorable members, uh, let's move to three. Anyone who wants to address us on the uh, Ray Honorable Kawa. <clears throat> uh, Chair, thank you very much. I haven't seen um, uh, the proposals. Uh, the NC hasn't seen the proposals from the other parties except the EFF. Uh, if I comment, my comment would be limited to what the EFF has placed uh, on the table. And uh, our, our initial uh, a reaction uh, to their propo uh, proposal, Chair, is that uh, this uh, uh, proposition will have a, a deleterious effect on the existing rights and land or property in general. In short, uh, <clears throat> uh, they are proposing that uh, we agree to cancel the existing rights to land or property in general. And uh, Chair, how will I explain that to the resident of Kwamashu and to Zuma Alexander Sowe Tunyanga, who until recently were given by this government, the current government, full title 
to the houses that they occupied for decades and uh, before 1994. They had their dignity restored to them by this government. That was the restoration of uh, dignity. Apartheid had refused them uh, uh, because they were regarded uh, temporary sojourners outside the reserved or scheduled uh, areas. And they had no right to be in towns and cities or to choose freely where uh, uh, they could live. They had just had their tenor, the tenor upgraded thanks to the efforts of this government. How do I explain to them that their rights would be canceled and converted uh, to a leasehold? That now they will become tenants you know, uh, of the states. How do we explain to the community property associations and trustees of the restituted properties that their tackle deed will be canceled? How do we explain to residents in Bishop's Court, Sentin and Westville that the officials uh, of the state will administer and supervise uh, the proposed new tenure and that they will not wake up one day with double registration on their property? I see that they have full confidence in the ability of the state to supervise tenure on behalf of all uh, the people. The ANC believes uh, in mixed ownership of property, uh, private ownership, uh, public ownership, and communal uh, uh, ownership. And that the state must be capacitated to accelerate redistribution of land, to expand access to land. That land reform would be achieved if the capacity, we also believe that land reform would be achieved if the state capacity, if the state has the capacity to expropriate, to expropriate land uh, in order to uh, deal with the national grievance. People still do not have land. The reality is that uh, of the more than 80 Seven, seven, more than eighty-five percent of the land, it's uh, in it's it's is 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 uh, in other hands, you know, and uh, owing to that abominable legislation, it is in that context that we are participating in this discussion to amend Section Twenty-Five of the Constitution, but we're willing to talk, and uh, we land uh, expropriation. Shall be one of the shall be a key mechanism to basically ensure that uh, there is equitable distribution of land, and uh, we are unstoppable, and they will not be blocked uh, in this regard. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Trava, Honorable Chibambo. No, thanks, Chair. I think what uh, Honorable Trava is particularly demonstrating now is that. The ANC is not committed to, to, to expropriation of land without compensation. Not, not, at, not at all. Uh, because if you are saying we must retain subsection 3, subsection 3 is giving you the conditions upon which you must pay, you must compensate for expropriation. That is problematic. And all those subsections in A up until E, they do not make sense in terms of the context, in terms of... Uh, and, and they, they actually are historical. They are historical in terms of what happens. They are denying the fact that the majority of those who are occupying the land now are colonial barbaric settlers or their descendants. That our land was taken through violence. That is, that, is, that is an obvious fact. But if you are saying that the amount must be determined by a court and must take into consideration the history of acquisition. They did not acquire this land. They took it through colonial barbarism. And, and, and as, as late as 1993, they tried to introduce a different tenure system through the upgrading of land uh, tenure rights and, 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 and secured this because they realized that a, a blacks only government or a predominantly black government will begin to legitimately and correctly question the, 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 un, the, the unjustifiable and wrong uh, occupation of land in the manner that it is. So it is problematic and actually reactionary to use our people in the townships that you have mentioned now, Honorable Kaba, to justify 
the retention of land in the hands of those who currently have now. Don't abuse the names of our people like that. Because even if we were to go now, like go, go to, the, to the minute details of just how many title deeds, so-called dead title deeds are in the hands of black people as compared to, to white people in South Africa. So the Surveyor General says that in terms of the overall 122 million hectares, 79% is in white people's hands and a smaller portion in the state hands, meaning that black people, black Africans in particular, do not have access to this land which we are claiming to be defending by retaining this section. If you go to arable land, we we'll illustrate it to you that it's 37 million hectares of arable land, 26 million of that is in the hands codified of white people. Black people have got less than 3% of that. But when you are justifying the retention of that section, you claim to be representing our people. You are not. You are not representing our people. You are not defending our people's rights of some title deeds of some apartheid house. And you say, call that dignity. You come to parliament and say, it's dignity to, 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 to celebrate that a, a, your president went to distribute pieces of paper for people to, to have those apartheid matchboxes. And is, is that a dignity of defending here? That is not the scope of discussion we're looking into now. We're looking into the land that must be given to our people. That is the context within which we're discussing, that there's no dignity in the townships that they've mentioned. No way. And you know what it means to give those, those title deeds? It means that all those properties are, are now disposable to the banks who have got a predatory financial system of banks that are going to offer those people loans and take even those matchbox houses that were given under a party. What kind of logic is this? So we are proposing, Chair, that that section, that subsection three, because majority of all those conditionalities for payment and repayment are not applicable. Let us insert a section that speaks about the state being the custodian of all of South Africa's land, but obviously emphasize the security of tenure. We will give the details in terms of how that should be. We'll have to mention that the state must be custodian of all of South Africa's land, because if you want to expropriate South Africa's land and you think you can only do that by expropriating piece by piece. If you have got 500,000 title deeds in white people's hands today, and you want to take all of those title deeds piece by piece, you must as well hire 500,000 legal teams because it's going to be a long, litigious uh, process which is going to take forever. The Minister of Public Works illustrated here that just to have land for public purposes, to put power lines. It took more than seven years of court challenges and back and forth in terms of a, a, a private owner refusing to let go of that. We'll, now we've got proper jurisprudence of the taking of our natural resources in the, in the, term, in the, in the context of minerals and in, in the context of water, where we can say custodianship is guaranteed and then we we'll convert the tenure rights which, which will be secured most definitely for residential purposes. And then we'll convert those rights. And the conversion of tenure rights is not foreign in South Africa, has happened in 1970, has happened in 1973, has happened with an attempt of apartheid in 1990, in 1993. Go and read the land tenure rights in South Africa and how apartheid adapted it from time to time to suit the apartheid agenda. Why can't we change our tenure right to seek a democratic redress agenda, which the constitution in, in, in section nine of the constitution says we've got an obligation as parliament to fulfill? We will not be able to resolve the land question if you think that the approach will be to assess piece by piece and taking into consideration all those five factors that are mentioned in subsection three. Let us delete that section and then we introduce a section that gives the state, the custodianship of the land, will guarantee the security of tenure for those that are occupying for residential purposes, so that there is no perception granted, a given, that we want to repossess people's houses. That is not the intention. We want our land back, 
but to understand that in the transitional context, we need to secure tenure for those who are staying in certain houses and some other uh, small properties that are Thank not due you. for expropriation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Shbambo. I think uh, Honorable Shbambo and Honorable Kaba have assisted us to realize that uh, serious bilateral, bilaterals by all parties are required with regard to Section 25.3, but also that uh, we need some clarity on the concept, conceptual, uh, some concepts, for instance, custodianship of the state, is it the same as nationalization? Uh, I think the bilateral must address that because in my view, custodianship and nationalization is not one and the same thing, but I'll leave that to the bilateral and reserve my opinion. Uh, Honorable yeah, Dumeda. Chair, uh, thank you. It, it looks as if we talk here at cross purposes. Uh, there is more that uh, Honorable Shivambo is adding, uh, especially when we begin to temper uh, with uh, houses to the extent that we refer to them as match boxes, as if there is anything that we can possibly do to expand those structures uh, for the communities, then it takes a lot for us to engage. I, I was saying as well, as a package, uh, is that uh, we need as well to define what land or what type of land as this ad hoc committee we are really targeting. We may perhaps begin to encroach uh, to some other pieces of land or property or whatever. That in fact, it's not part of the target that we are looking for. I then chair support the view because the main thing that made me to raise my hand is that it looks as if, as you are saying, there is quite a lot in those deliberations is to be unpacked so that we get exactly the understanding what other parties do understand in the process we are involved in. It looks as if we can't find each other because we've got quite a lot of a very big ballooned understanding of the process. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Gumede. Honorable Dr. Milder. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, well, obviously, we're all entitled to our own opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. Um, we have to listen weekly to Mr. Shivambu's interpretation of the uh, percentages of land being uh, occupied and belonging to which group or which group does not have land. Um, those are interesting, but uh, those must won't make it the uh, truth, unfortunately, Mr. Shivambu. Um, you could, should have a look at the, uh, the Great Karoo as well. We are talking about a third of South Africa's territory, 33%, semi-desert, no arable land. But in any case, um, I would like to refer to uh, also to Section 25.3 in that sense. Section 25.3 was not written by a previous government or by anybody else. It was written by the Constitutional Assembly, which negotiated Section 25.3. And those provisions in Sections uh, 25.3, A, B, C, D, and E are all very relevant because those are the kinds of things that needs to be taken into consideration when whatever, when you want to expropriate. Um, my, pro my problem with the EFS position is that it's obviously based on an absolute racial approach. Um, it's quite clear land of white people needs to be confiscated and land of black people should not be touched. That is the approach. The second approach obviously is a very socialist approach that all land and all property, they want property as well, should belong to the state. Now, I think we should really take cognizance of section one, the founding provisions of the constitution, especially section 1B that says the state is founded on the principle of non-racialism. Mr. Shivambo also referred to section nine, the equality clause. And I think you should also have a look at section, um, subsection 
uh, uh, 9 4, uh, which clearly states that no person may unfairly discriminate, direct or indirect, against anyone on certain grounds. And then it refers to subsection 3 that refers to race. Quite obviously, the agenda of the EFF is here to, to do this whole process absolutely squarely based on a racial approach. I understand what Mr. Kaba is saying in terms of the dignity of people, and I think we should take cognizance of that reality in terms of where the state has given full title to individuals in South Africa. They have restored the dignity, and that is a process that we think should be continued and should be enhanced. Uh, I think it's absolutely going the wrong direction if we think that we can expropriate or, or nationalize or call it custodianship, it means that the state will take control of all land and all property. It will take us back. Uh, we can only have a look at that wonderful, successful example of a state called Venezuela. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> honorable members, can we just uh, agree that uh, we have uh, a constitution adopted by all the people of South Africa, both black and white. And in this process, we are guided by that constitution. And in terms of that constitution, the South African society consists of all its people, both black and white. And uh, in the last meeting, I think we agreed that the problem we are dealing with is not a black and white matter. It is really a South African problem. All of us, both black and white, are working together uh, under this constitution to find a solution to historical problems. So uh, it, it shouldn't be they and us. Let's work as a collective together to find the solution to a, a problem, but taking the cue from the values embodied in the, in the constitution. Uh, Honorable Dr. Lothric. Thank you, Chairperson. I just want to express um, a very, very deep concern about um, the proposal that uh, the country should go the route of custodianship of property, and then also specifically land, um, because we cannot, and I agree with you, Chairperson, we have to be guided by the Constitution, and our Constitution protects and enshrines our rights. And changing one thing because of a political expediency or an ideology will have a knock-on effect on many other sections in the Constitution protecting the citizens of this country. It will have a massive economic impact um, in terms of our banking sector in terms of jobs. So um, from our side, there is absolutely no way that we would even consider custodianship and deny people, the residents, the citizens of this country, the right to own property and to deal with it as they see fit. Honorable Dr. Lutrich, are you done? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, that's why I said, there are conceptual issues that must be addressed. For instance, is nationalization and state custodianship the same thing? Because uh, the state may be a custodian of expropriated property or land pending redistribution. Uh, but nationalization would vest the property permanently in the hands of the state. And the two things are not the same. But uh, as I say, I don't want to prejudge. I'm suggesting that that matter should be go to the bilateral. And because it's raised sharply by the, and, uh, the EFF, the DA and the ANC, I think uh, these three parties should engage with that, but not to the exclusion of other parties that have an interest uh, in the matter. Honorable Shubambo. Honorable Shibambo, is that an old hand? No, it's not an old hand, uh, Chair. It's, I want uh, to make quick intervention. Proceed, yes. pro proceed. Yeah. So, so Chair, so the, in, 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 in 2018, the Department of uh, Land Affairs and Agriculture the, released the, the statistics 
terms of land ownership, we're talking about now the Arab land, and said that of the total of 37 million hectares, 26 million, 663,144 hectares, which is 72% is owned by white people. That is a fact. You can't say, we can't say it's white against black. What, what dealing with the historical and a present fact that defines land ownership in South Africa. And the people who are classified as colored own million three hundred and seventy one percent of the Arab classic constitution or in the documents of government as Indians own two million uh, then one thousand seven hundred and ninety hectares, which is like five percent of the and Africans, who are, by the way, 80% of the population, own just 1.3 million hectares, which is like less than 4% effectively. This is, this, are, this is scientifically derived and proven data in terms of land ownership in South Africa. And we cannot say when we want to say that we want to take land from those who have and give to those that we do not have, say, no, this, don't make this a racial question. Apartheid was a racist racial question. Colonialism was a racist racial question. And what what, what decisively dealing with apartheid and colonialism now? Honorable Shbambo, are you done? Honorable Shbambo? Honorable Shbambo? Honorable Shbambo? Honorable Shibambo, honorable members. Chair, we are listening. Uh, I don't, we don't know what oh, happened. Okay, honorable Shibambo has disappeared. Uh, but I just wanted to say to him that uh, since 1994, there are black people, some call them black elites or African elites who have bought farms which are subject to uh, land claims. So it really means that uh, to deal with these problems, we don't really even to re need to racialize them. We must deal with the problems uh, objectively because if we start a, a race debate, we are going to end up throwing mud at uh, one another and not addressing the core problem. The core problem, is that land has got to be redistributed, in some cases restituted, and in some cases uh, the tenure system must be upgraded. That should be our focus, and uh, not the, uh, the, the racial or tribal things. Thank you very much. Honorable Kaba. Chair, I wanted to correct um, uh, one thing that um, Honorable Shivambo said. He said that uh, the ANC wants to retain uh, Section 25.3 as is. I'm saying that is incorrect. Uh, we are proposing an amendment uh, to Section 25.3 uh, because, as I said earlier on, is to make explicit what is um, uh, implicit in the Constitution. And uh, so we have said that chair, uh, that um, you know, land, uh, that legislation uh, we are proposing, that legislation uh, must be enacted uh, to uh, determine circumstances where uh, the amount of compensation is nil. That's what we are effecting uh, to the uh, amendment, so that it's very clear that it is going to be possible for the, for, for the state to expropriate land um, uh, with a, a nil uh, compensation. So that's our view and we'll present the view at, uh, the bilateral, uh, at the bilaterals that we have proposed. But when we spoke about uh, the AFL's position uh, canceling the existing rights and uh, there's Kumete here, uh, he has a tackle deed. And um, uh, now, this honorable Gumede, there's no good. Yeah, yes, he has a tackle deed. 
Chairperson, can you please? Hello? I had not concluded. The, I had not concluded no, you, my you point had, on. You, you, you had disappeared. Uh, we sought oh, to find yeah. you. We didn't. But let Honorable Kaba finish, and then you come back. All right. Yeah, when he comes back, he must, uh, Honorable Shivambo must tell us what then happens when the lease um, uh, expires. Uh, number one and number two, um, uh, he must also tell us how will Kumete, who is in this meeting, uh, now uh, has his uh, tackle deed converted into uh, uh, a leasehold and uh, and converted into from a, a landowner, a full titled owner, to a, a tenant. And uh, how much will he be charged every month, or uh, or, or will he be expected to pay, um, you know, uh, rent uh, annually or monthly? Those are issues that we need to deal with when we meet uh, at a bilateral. The difference between uh, full title and the lease implications of leasehold on those uh, who have uh, whose rights would have been converted uh, uh, to to leasehold. I'm not debating it right now, but it's a matter that will be debated when we meet um, uh, at a bilateral level. Thank you so much, and and that it will actually be reversing all the gains that uh, people have so far scored since 1994. Thank you so much, Honorable Kaba. Don't use Honorable Gumede as an example. People will think that uh, we are defending uh, our member. The ANC is defending its members who own property. Honorable Gumede was just an example, but uh, that does not affect him. Hello? Hello? Honorable Shubambo? Is it, is it me now, Chair? Yeah, that's you. Yes. Uh, no, I was I was saying that there is there is obviously a conspicuous distinction between nationalization and state custodianship. We will give, we'll do a simple table where we say this is national. We have difficulties hearing you now. Hello? Honorable members, are you there? The person we are here, but we can't hear Honorable Shivambu. I think there's a problem. Custodianship of the land is oh. different. If we would have said it ourselves in terms of, I'm saying if we wanted to say we would demand the nationalization of land, Honorable members, I think uh, we have uh, agreed that this matter will go to bilaterals. I think let's proceed to uh, uh, subsection four. Anyone who wants to lead us there? Subsection four. Is there nothing to say there? Uh, was it on section 25.4? Yeah. Um, we have no comment on section 25.4, Chair, uh, uh, but we are willing, uh, we have an open door policy. Okay, thank you, that's helpful. Any other contribution in that? Uh, I don't see any hand, can we move to 25? Five. Is there any other person from the EFF here? Chair, on 25.5, uh, mm -hmm. we're not uh, proposing any amendment at this stage. And um, because we said um, we are open to persuasion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew Kaba. Any other hand? Uh, no hand. Uh, can we move to 25.6? Uh, Chair, 25.6. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we are not uh, uh, proposing any amendment at this stage. And uh, as I said, uh, because we are still in discussion with the uh, with, with our counter with the different political parties, and um, we are open to persuasion. We may come back with a position, uh, but so far, so far, our position is that we 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 are not proposing any amendment at this stage. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Kaba. Any other input? Any other input? Uh, none. Uh, you know, I don't know. Am I clear now? Because now you are clear. I'm, I mean, I mean, put that the chaba, and it's very difficult. Put that the chaba, and it's it's it's. I've got the. Uh, I mean, put at the chaba, and I'm I'm I've got the very uh, bad network in terms of what what is happening. So mm. I, I I wanted to labor on the point of the distinction between custodianship and nationalization. We will give a, a like a basic illustration of what is the distinction. We'll actually make a submission to the bilaterals, but also to the committee, so that because there is a mm -hmm. deliberate bastardization of the custodianship demand and, and proposal that we're making. And 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 so all those questions which are being asked, who is going to how how we're going to guarantee security of tenure, it will be resolved when we then make a much more substantial uh, submission. So there is a there's a there's a deliberate misunderstanding and miscomprehension of of this distinction. There is a huge distinction between custodianship and nationalization, and we'll illustrate that far much more firmly. I'm 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 in a space where the network is not dependable, so I will not be able to participate in the remain, remainder of the sections, but there was submission of subsection yeah. 7. Honorable Shbambo, try to accommodate us and participate, because after this meeting, we want to identify all matters that must go to bilaterals, like what we are saying about the state custodianship and nationalization. So we are only left with the 25-7 and we want to hear you on that section. Uh, so can we, because there are no other hands, can we proceed to 25-7? Uh, While you are there, Honorable Shwambu, uh, Honorable Kala? Chair, 25-7, uh, uh, once again, uh, we are open to uh, persuasion. At the moment, um, we have not, uh, we are not um, uh, proposing an amendment to the section. Thank you, Honorable Kaba. Honorable Shlambo? Honorable Shlambo? Yes, Chair, I think his, his, his phone has come under the custodianship of the state. Yeah, yeah, so that the state can look well after it and then he, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we are talking. <laughs> now we are talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, Honorable Shwambo, are you back? No, you don't have to be back. The state will look after your food. Okay. Uh, subsection 8. Chair, uh, subsection 8 and um, a very progressive uh, section in the Constitution. Let me read it for, for everyone to uh, to, 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 to know it, it says no provision of this section may impede the state from taking legislative and other measures to achieve land, water and related reform in order to redress the results of past racial discrimination provided, provided that any departure from the provisions of this section is in accordance with the provisions of section uh, 36.1. So this is an important uh, uh, section and, uh, in, in, the, in the constitution and uh, it reflects the character uh, of the transformative nature of uh, section uh, 25 that none of the clauses above have give any positive right contrary to what um, Honorable uh, Dr. Muda was actually uh, saying. It says when 
uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the guaranteed right and the re reformative element in the constitution are in conflict. The remote, re the remote, the reformative uh, element will uh, take uh, precedence. And uh, so I think when we, when we interpret the constitution, we must interpret it uh, holistically, not in piecemeal uh, fashion, because no single clause uh, in the constitution uh, as it is must be interpreted outside uh, uh, without reference to the structure of section 2025 20, and outside its transformative character as it is captured in the preamble of the constitution. So we're not proposing any amendment uh, to, section, uh, to, to, to section 25, uh, eight, uh, as, as it were. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Dr. Melder. That was a, a good formulation by Honorable Kaba. But um, he has also referred to section 36.1, and 36.1 is specifically referred to in subsection 8, and it says it must be in accordance with subsection 36.1 of the Constitution, that provision 8, and whatever comes from that, and it says the rights in the Bill of Rights may be limited only in terms of a law of general application to the extent that the limitation is reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society based on human dignity, equality, and freedom, taking into account the relevant factors, including, and then it gives all those, and that takes me back to section one of the Constitution, the founding provisions, and the rule of law. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, we, we, we are together on that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. There's no other hand. Can we move to subsection nine? Section nine, Chair, 25, mm. nine. It says parliament must enact legislation referred to in subsection six. And um, so we, the ANC is not uh, uh, proposing any amendment uh, to the section. Uh, uh, all what uh, this section uh, does uh, it says the parliament must enact a uh, legislation to give effect to uh, section 25 uh, 6 section 25 6 uh, you know um, uh, uh, promotes uh, the upgrade of uh, land uh, tenure rights that we have not we support it we have no amendment to make uh, with respect to this particular section. Indeed, the, 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 the tenures, um, uh, 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 tenure, uh, insecure tenure must be upgraded because it's only uh, when a government takes uh, strong measures to deal with this that uh, the dignity of our people will be fully restored. I must add that there is a suite of uh, legislations that have uh, been promulgated to try and deal with this uh, uh, particular section. And uh, so uh, I think it's in good hands and uh, we are dealing with it. Uh, however, there's still more to be done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Kevin. Honorable members, I don't see any other hand. I have the following proposal to make. Uh, the proposal is that uh, as Honorable uh, Lesoma took the initiative to coordinate the bilateral, I guess with your permission, all of you, uh, that uh, she should uh, identify areas that must go to bilaterals and uh, circulate that if any party thinks that something has been omitted and uh, uh, they should reserve the right to include that so that we have a menu for bilaterals which uh, as we said should be completed uh, the latest by uh, sunday so that uh, when we meet next week now uh, the purpose would be identify 
where is con there, where there is convergence and where there is no convergence, then as a committee, we have to decide how do we deal with uh, those uh, differences. Because uh, we have to move to the stage where we come up with uh, a revised text that uh, we should uh, uh, propose. Now, uh, we had agreed that uh, we would deal with uh, the legal opinion. But my view is that uh, we shouldn't because uh, there are serious allegations against uh, the uh, parliamentary legal services. And those allegations are not shared by all of us. And uh, we don't have any substantive uh, basis advanced uh, to back those uh, uh, allegations. And uh, I would want to be given uh, an opportunity to seek advice from the chair of chairs, Honorable Cedric uh, Frolic, on how we deal with that matter. So I, I'm uh, proposing that uh, we shouldn't deal with the matter. I need to get uh, guidance from the chair of chairs. Any taker? Uh, Honorable Dr. Milder. Yes, Chairperson, I understand what you are saying. I am of the view that uh, it's an excellent legal opinion. It's based on uh, the law, it's based on the rules of parliament, and it's based not only from the legal services department, but also having consulted with an NA table. So I understand that you would like to get advice. I would support that. Um, I don't have a problem with that, but it will mean that, that at the later stage, we most likely will have to deal with this uh, legal opinion because it does have an important implication for the uh, work of this committee. Thank you, sir. Yes, Honorable Mrosetha. Honorable Mrosetha. Chairperson, uh, good, good morning. And how are good you? Good morning. Yeah, well, thanks. How are you? That's OK, Prof. Uh, no, I think the, 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 the proposal you are bringing forth, it, it makes a, a lot of sense. I rise here maybe for the first time to support uh, Honorable Melder and uh, on his uh, article second amendment on your statement. Thank you very much. Oh, we are making progress. I want to say that uh, my consultation with the chair of chairs is not because personally I have a problem with the uh, opinion, but I think I have a duty to defend the integrity of the uh, parliamentary legal staff. Uh, if they are uh, attacked, we can't turn a blind eye. We have to find out uh, what is the basis of the attack because I've worked with uh, all of them for a long time. And even now I have no basis to suspect that they are dishonest or lack integrity. But we must deal with that uh, formally to clear them because we can have such a situation hanging over their heads, uh, especially that these allegations were raised publicly. They have to be addressed and uh, uh, put to rest. Okay, so honorable members, do we agree that uh, this is the end of the meeting and that uh, between now and Sunday, let's uh, engage and that in this engagement, all political parties, regardless of their size, must be accorded equal opportunity and uh, their submissions should be treated on their merits and demerits. And uh, I want to thank all of you for the cooperative manner in which uh, you have conducted the affairs of uh, this committee. So you will hear from uh, the committee section, when are the next meetings? We are also going to seek permission to meet more than once from next week. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to adjourn the meeting unless someone wants to raise something. Thank you, Chairperson. Long live the chair. Okay. Have, a, have a tough weekend, no rest, <laughs> uh, no entertainment, but work. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you, colleagues. Uh, you know what? Um, colleagues from committees, can you remain behind, please?